What's up guys? I'm working on a 5-speed Mustang this time. This is a uh, black 8993 Fox with an A9L computer, the 5-speed computer. And uh, even though the computer capacitors look like they're on their way out, or at least one of them's on its way out, it's still not acting up as far as I can tell on the way the computer runs. Um, or at least nothing that would affect data logging. So I thought I would try out my uh, newest data logging parameters on this Fox body. There you can see I'm logging 159 bytes total, but 112 parameters. Some of those parameters are eight bytes apiece, as they are bit flags. And I'll give you guys a little look at what we've been working on. I did this last week for the A9P computer, which was the automatic. But here's the proof. It works for the A9L as well, or at least most of the parameters. I might have one or two to touch up. Yeah, that one doesn't look quite right. IBAP, raw barometric pressure sensor input, that one's going a little bit nuts. I had a problem with that with A9P2. I'm not convinced I have the function right on that one, but the one above it is right. That's the filtered version of that parameter that's actually used in the computer tune, and it's reading 30 uh, inches of mercury, which is pretty much sea level, which is what we are at in Florida. Min, Tim, 1 and 2 are the timers for how the frequency is measured from the barometric pressure sensor. I'm still working on how that works, but that's pretty cool. Closed loop flag equal 1. The car is in closed loop. The timer's already maxed out. Desired math, that one is not right. I've got to fix the parameters right, but the formula is wrong. i got to fix that. This is a bone stock car, by the way. This is the part I'm particularly proud of. All the flags I added all the flags. There's seven bit flags per byte. And each one of them, they can be logged separately, but it's easier to log them together or you'd have 500 pages of, of logs. This injector state one, I don't think that the injector states are slow enough to be caught hardly on this screen. But if you take a hard look at this one in the middle here, those ones and zeros go right down the line, probably faster than what this thing can log. But the injector's firing, each time one injector fires, that zero becomes a one at that moment. And you can kind of see them blinking down the line. Still working on that one a little bit. I don't think it's worth logging, but maybe if you played it back in slow motion, it would be. This one I like. Failed memory effects management flag and the bit flags for failed sensors. This is this guy in the middle here. All zeros, meaning that none of the sensors are actually uh, malfunctioning. 
when a sensor on a Ford goes bad, the computer ignores that sensor and substitutes the value and goes into what they call FMEM or failure mode effects management, meaning they, they wing it. If the coolant temp sensor suddenly doesn't read anything, they throw a number in there that makes sense. Take a look too at the speed of this. It's not earth shattering, I suppose, but bear in mind, I'm logging 112 parameters at the same time, which is everything I can think of to log. I am throwing the kitchen sink at data logging on this Fox body. I didn't leave anything unchecked to not log. So this thing is logging literally everything we can all at once. And if you look at the refresh rate, it's not bad. Better than most OBD2 cars. That's pretty cool. Monitors the injector delay currently being used, so uh, end of injection timing, 352 degrees. Idle air integrator, 0 0.01 pounds. That's pretty great. Means the car's idling very, very close to what Ford intended it to. Idle speed control duty cycle at 45%. I think it could be a little bit lower than that if I were to turn the throttle stop screw up just a hair. It's a little low. ISC cams, that's for uh, keep alive memory, what the computer has learned to compensate for uh, in the idle quality. Of course, some of these are not learned yet because we haven't put it in gear or whatever or turned the air on or off. So some of those values are just starter values. Only the one that's going to be neutral with the AC off is probably the only one that's actually uh, functional. So it's learned 0.126 pounds a minute. Raw TPS voltage instead of filtered, that's pretty cool. Cam RF, that is the keep alive memory fuel trims in multipliers uh, with a 1.0 multiplier being even. So bank one has a 6.6% fuel trim. Bank two has a 3.9% fuel trim. There's a slight variance there side to side, but overall, not too bad. Key power, I don't have that formula right. It's not what I would expect to see. Lamsey, that is the short-term fuel trims. Um, they bobble between 0.98 and 1.02 if the car is in closed loop and doing well. And this thing is in closed loop and doing well, and the O2 sensors are reacting and reacting fast. That's a good sign. Uh, load, 15%, that's about right. Air mass at idle, 0.75 pounds a minute. Still working on MAP divided by BAP. I'm not quite sure about the formula on that one. That RPM indicator gives you a pretty good idea of how fast this computer is able to log. And that's a pretty fast update rate. Especially considering the number of things I'm logging at the same time. Injector pulse width right around 3 milliseconds per side. Ratch is the lowest TPS voltage logged. Spark angle pulse width, that's not using these older computers, but it is in the newer ones. And this is a new parameter that I added since we talked last. Spark advanced final versus just spark advance. Spark advance is not actually the final calculation. SAF is. And you can almost see occasionally you can see a small difference, but Spark Advance is what's calculated, and Spark Advance Final is what really happens based on a few last minute changes to Spark. Spark Multiplier, that I don't believe I have the correct formula, I think it's half of that. But I'm getting close.
filter TPS voltage, that's probably counts. Um, yeah, that's about right for counts, so that's actually not voltage, it's counts. Battery voltage, check this out. That last Fox I had in had horrible battery voltage, and I thought, well, there's a voltage drop between the battery and the PCM, old wiring, etc. But this little guy, he's got some nice sharp battery voltage going to the computer, and that might be because this guy has converted the car to uh, the newer SN95 style alternator, which has a, a higher voltage, but essentially that alternator is doing its job. And my favorite math voltage, which is correct. Go back up, we'll take a look at those bit flags again. I guess the camera's having a hard time focusing on all that, but there's there a lot of bit flags there. And each bit is like an on-off switch or a one or a zero that represents something. Kind of like a light switch on or off. Um, the computer throws flags, so like uh, B5 is a fan flag and B6 is the high fan flag, so if we were to see those on, it would represent that the computer has um, flipped that switch and turned that, that fan on or off. In this case, the low fan is actually wired backwards uh, internally in the computer the way the computer thinks, so flipping it on is actually turning the fan off. Um, the Fox body doesn't come with electric fans, but we can add them with the help of a chip, which is pretty cool. In fact, I'll give you guys a sneak preview of my tuner software. I've been writing my own strategy for this thing for a couple of years, and I've showed this off before, but I'll do it again. If I wanted to go in and add a fan to this thing, you can just turn the fan on, and that brings up some parameters that weren't available before. Then I add a high-speed fan, and that brings up even more parameters that weren't available before. And then we can go in and make all these adjustments for like when the fan comes on, when it goes off, etc. That's pretty cool. Billy Brantley, random question on an F-150 batch fire speed density computer, can you burn a chip to make it sequential? If that, probably not, but if that computer had sequential capability I could throw the switch um, but a batch fire vehicle is wired differently so that's only going to work if if the computer had both options and then you rewired the car or used a sequential harness and then have me flip the switch um, usually that's not done because there's usually a lot more to that so I don't think uh, I think the answer to your question is yes with a wiring harness change and it might even be no. I haven't filled all the blanks in in the dash on the A9L yet, but this is a quick look at the easy to read screen. It's amazing that a car can be sitting here idling with a hood up this late at night and it's cold out and it still hits 168 air temp even with the hood up in cold weather. It'll drop like a rock when you drive down the road, but it's kind of curious. This is kind of important. This is uh, the O2 sensor switching back and forth between 0 and 1 volt taking a look at the speed at which they uh, switch. They switch at 400 and fill it 450 millivolts, which is roughly that green area in the middle. And uh, everything in the red area is lean, everything in the blue area is rich. And if the car's running right, it'll just switch back and forth across lean and rich to indicate that the car is averaging stoichiometry. In a Fox body, that parameter alone is worth its weight in gold because otherwise it's really difficult to figure out whether you have an ego, uh, O2 sensor problem. You have to basically have a scope and data log at 
the voltage at the O2 sensor if you don't have this parameter. So this parameter pays big dividends and it tells me that the O2 sensors in this car are functional. The rate at which they switch back and forth is something to be discussed. Long-term fuel trims, 8% and 6%. It's acceptable. One side's a little high, and that is uh, bank one, which is the uh, passenger side. I would probably look at that side for exhaust leaks. Maybe, uh, yeah, probably exhaust leaks. Maybe an old sensor. Lamsey 1 and 2, that's the switch back and forth across stoichiometry being 1.0. So it goes about 0.98 to about 1.02. Flipping back and forth like that tells me the O2 sensors are active, they're working. The car is able to achieve stoichiometry, which is roughly 14.7 to 1 air fuel ratio. It's able to do that because it keeps switching back and forth across that point. And in order to be able to do that, it had to add 6 to 8% on each side. So the car is a little bit, a little bit lean um, at idle and making the computer's making a small correction. It's not much of a correction, though. It's really well within the range uh, that we look for to be acceptable. But if I was trying to perfect this car, I'd be looking a little harder at fuel pressure and maybe injector flow. Injector duty cycle is kind of an interesting parameter. Not so much at idle, but at wide open throttle, that's worth its weight in gold. Some of this table doesn't work yet in the Fox body one. It's a little bit different, or sorry, in the uh, five speed computer, it's a little bit different on the math and TPS. kind of simulated gauges for guys that like looking at stock looking gauges. And again the O2s except for this time it's uh, vertical instead of horizontal. Well everything looks pretty good. Uh, this car gets a clean bill of health as far as the computer goes. I think there's still some more work that could be done on this particular car to make it run better. Uh, but I think they're going to be in the basics. I think that's it for now, guys. I just wanted to show you that the A9L and the A9P have been conquered, and we are able to log 112 parameters and 159 bytes worth of data all at the same time in real time. Alright guys, I got some data to analyze so I'll talk to you later.